much match practice for, for a while. How did you pull up after that first one? It was a pretty intense game. Um, yeah, it was a tough game. Uh, um, like you said, no, no match, match practice, but um, I got through all right. A couple of little knocks that I forgot about since I've been away for a few weeks. But um, yeah, you know, the long fight, flight doesn't help, but um, we've got a six-day break, so emphasis has just been on recovery and getting myself right for this week. How good, how good was it to get back out there and get yeah, playing with boys after the time you spent out? Oh, yeah, it was a great feeling um, to run through the banner with the boys again and um, come out in front of... You know, a big crowd, it's always fun playing in front of big crowds, even though it wasn't ours, and Indigenous round as well. I was, you know, I was very proud to run out with the jersey. Um, so, yeah, I, I had a lot of fun. I know, um, you know it doesn't sound right because we lost by such a big margin, but it was just good to be back out there and not on the sidelines again. How tough was that period on the sidelines? And obviously the team struggling as well while you were out. Yeah, it was very tough because, you know, I, I couldn't be out there and help out. Um, on the weekend, you know, we still lost, but at least I could I could walk off the field knowing that I, you know, that I contributed, and um, I, I wasn't just sitting in the in the on the sidelines just spectating. So, you know, it is tough to still still lose by such a big margin, but at least I'm out there going through the battle with the with my teammates. Stephen, that feeling of having to be a spectator for five weeks is that something you never want repeated ever again? And I know you've mentioned before that you're you're willing to make a slightly change to your approach. Um, no, definitely. Uh, I don't want to. You know, we have to go through the, that sort of uh, length of suspension again. Um, I, you know, I've had to change my ways. On I don't really bump a lot, but it's just when I have, I've been, um, I've been reported. So that's sort of been taken out of my game a bit. Um, you know, not with shepherding and and putting on blocks, but more like just running and trying to bump blokes. I'm just just got to go for the ball nowadays. Um, there's no, there's no really no time for a bump anymore. Really, um, there's a, there's a, you know, if if you make any high contact, you're going to cop a a good suspension, so yeah, I, I can't see that happen too much anymore. Do you feel like you owe the boys a little bit for the time you spent out? Definitely, yeah. I, you know, I've been, you know, I've let them down for five weeks, and especially such a young team with all the injuries. You know, the young blokes like Sean Lemons and um, Jared Harbour is not young, but he's he's a leader. They've all had to step up and carry the back line because uh, you know I've gone out with suspension, or Rory's also out with injury, so. Yeah, I feel like I've let them down, but I can't really think about that much anymore and just try and, you know, help contribute in the next well, for the rest of the year. Steve, out of the frying pan the fire, Kennedy likely to have bloody frank on this weekend? Yeah, it doesn't get any easier, does it? Yeah. <laughs> no, um I you know, I, I relish playing on the on the stars of the game. That's you know, it's you know, it's a perk of my job playing down back. Um, you know, Kennedy's the star and I've still got a bag kicked on me, but um not much I can do about that and like you said, we've got Buddy Franklin this week and the Swans who are going really well and Buddy's been in super form. So, you know, I just got to prepare for him like I did with Kennedy and, you know, hopefully there's a bit more uh, midfield support like, like we showed in the second half. We are able to slow down West Coast scoring, but, um, you know, I think it's going to be one or lost in the midfield, that's for sure. Would you have Rory back this week? You know? I think he may be playing in the reserves because of such a long time out and he's been injured, hasn't trained a lot. so. I mean, I'd love to bring him straight back in, but I think for his own welfare, the conditioning staff will, will want to have him run in the twos first just to see if he gets through okay. And so, I mean, you touched on the midfield there. How much difference does that make? Because we saw in the first half where you were sort of isolated in the forward 50 on your own with Kennedy and it looked like it was nearly impossible and the ball was coming in like that and then you saw a bit more pressure. It seemed to make it look a little bit easier. How much easier is it? Oh, so much easier. The second half, Kennedy kicked one goal. Um, and that's you know a bit of me, a bit of the uh, the midfield putting some pressure on the kicks in the first half. Like you said, it did feel impossible out there. I tried everything I could, and um, he had 50 metres of space to work with, in, and no pressure on the kick. So, um, you know, everyone thinks it's a one-on-one -on -one duel um, with a full forward and a full back, but really, it's about the delivery. If um, my midfield's able to put some pressure on, I'm half a chance of stopping it. But if they're coming out through the middle and you're hitting lace-out kicks, it's it's yeah, it's very difficult to. Try and stop a star like Kennedy and Franklin and etc. Maisie, what was Rocket's message after the game? He was um, like we had a few performance indicators going into the game about pressure factor, tackles, contested possession. Um, so he was he was pretty like pleased with that. Um, the second half, I think, as a playing group and with Rocket, he was happy that we didn't just roll over. You've seen teams get blown out of the water over at Domain, especially against the Eagles this year. So the second half. You know, I'll admit I was a little bit worried that they were going to get a run on and kick a few, but we, I think we may have outscored them in the third, and um, it was probably 
pretty close towards the last quarter, but they won, they won the game in the first half. So I was happy that the boys, such an inexperienced side, didn't just roll over and take, take the beating, but you know, fought back and were able to you know, score a bit because we didn't score a lot in the first half. So we were able to take some sort of positives out of it. You're getting a bar, we don't know, somewhere between five and seven or eight players back this week. That's what you expect to get back. Well, what is the expectation? What should we be expecting of you guys from now forward with all these sort of troops coming back? I think the biggest one will be with the personnel coming back, they're good, they're good kicks. So, you know, the turnovers should, should drop down. Like, we, we're going to put some um, training drills in place to really stop that because that's been a problem over the last, you know, six weeks is turnovers killing us. So, with those boys coming in, they're, they're really good disposals and um, they should be able to help with that. But also their experience. You know, there's, there's a few like Matty Roser and Trent McKenzie, Adam Sarda hopefully next week. There's, there's a lot to still come back and um, we'll be able to build some more continuity. And certainly after the bye, um, you should see a lot more competitive side out of us. And like, um, there shouldn't be big losses. Uh, if there are, there, there'll be questions asked, that's for sure. But um, at the moment, we are, we are a very young side and we don't have a lot of, to pick from from the reserve. So there's not that pressure on the boys to perform. I think when there's you know, seven or eight coming back, boys are going to be on notice and they're going to be playing a lot more on their toes and um, we could see a lot, uh, much more competitive side in the second half. Is it not just, I guess, not just the defeats, which is obviously hard, but is it, is it the manner of the defeats that's been the hardest thing to take, the fact that they've been quite hefty ones as well? Yeah, well, if you look back at Geelong and Melbourne, the, the effort and stuff was, really wasn't there, um, and there were big defeats, whereas I know from you guys' perspective, it, you know, there's 70 points is still a big defeat, but with what Rocket gave us going to the game, that's what he wanted us to achieve, and we, we were able to do that. Nobody's happy with the loss. You know, there's still a dull feeling on the plane ride home, but to, to go into the review and take something out of the game is, is what we're tr trying to do, especially with some young boys like Maka Willis, playing in um, Domain Stadium, playing on Lacroix and um, Crips, you know, packed house and a big loss. Yeah, that's invaluable experience that he's getting. So those sort of indi uh, indi uh, performance indicators are, are being achieved, but we're certainly not happy with the way we're going still. Um, yeah, I haven't really, well as a playing group we don't really look at, you know, where we, we, we made that mistake early, we, we thought we were going to win a lot, of games, a lot of games going early and we lost to Brisbane round four. Um, so I know it's a cliche but sort of week by week with the personnel coming back we can't just magically think, you know, we get five blokes back we're going to win. Um, you still have to get that synergy and chemistry together, um, especially on team defence, it's something that we really need to work on. So I know Rockets, you know, he's... Um, you know, pretty optimistic there, I think. But if if we can win and you know win the remainder of our games, well, there's no there's no reason why we can't. But I, I as a as a player and as a playing group, I think we just want to see you know that that those turnovers come down and then we can start winning games and then then we can look at those sort of things. But I don't think we're really looking at finals as of yet.